Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create photorealistic metal materials just like this. So let's get right into it. So with any type of material, you should always have a reference photo. If you've ever spec'd a fixture or appliance, you'll notice that they come in all these different finishes, right? And these finishes, they're all very, very similar. That's the interesting thing about metals. It doesn't take you much work to actually go from something like this to something like that. It's actually really simple. So I'll explain that a little bit further. You may see, you know, chips like this, where it's just like different samples. So I wanna show you how to create a really nice metal material. You know, think of it as your, your master material, your base material that you tweak. So I'm really gonna focus on like stainless steel materials. So something like this. Um, or like this, and then I'll show you how to tweak it further. So this is a typical stove, and this is all dolled up. So what I'm gonna do is just reset this. So I'm just gonna hit reset, and I'm going to go over to custom. Make sure you're in the custom template, and I'm gonna show you which maps I use. Generally speaking for metals, you could use a base color if you wanna have a tint, right? Which you totally can do. You can grab this guy right here, this color picker, and it will actually select anything on your screen, okay? So meaning, if I were to grab, you know, this, um, this champagne color here and just move my D5 over, just so you could see this, I can color pick and click this and then I'd have that champagne color, right? So that's really, really handy because uh, metals, you know, you wanna be pretty precise. So anyways, I'm just gonna clear that out and I'm gonna go with my base color map. Um, this is totally optional. So I'm gonna click this and I'm gonna import a brushed metal or stainless steel color. So this, I'm gonna show you exactly what this looks like and how I generated it. Uh, Cause it's actually kind of, kind of funny. Um, check this out. This is all it is. It looks like this. And now how did I get this? Well, ChatGPT. It's pretty cool. You can ask it to generate texture maps for you, right? So use that. If you don't want to pay for, you know, polygon or something or substance, you could just do that. Um, so anyways, this is like a simple gray material. It also gave me a normal map. Again, this came from ChatGPT. I didn't do anything fancy here. You can find these online as well. So I loaded that in. I'm going to load in the normal map because a brushed metal has got those little streaks. So if you remember, looking at this little reference photo right over here. Look at this, we've got all those different streaks, just like that. So that is the brushed look, okay? So right now you can see we're not really seeing too much of it. So I'm gonna bump up my normal just a bit and then I'm gonna play with my stretch. Um, and that's after I apply my triplanar and my UV randomizer, just in case there's any like weird things going on. So I'm gonna type in 12 and that fixes um, the scale 12 is like a pretty good number for that. Then with the base color, I can darken it or do a color pick like I just showed you, right? So generally stainless steel is somewhere around here. I like that color. Specular does not matter if it's a metal material. So let me show you. If I crank this up to one, we want it to be metal, right? Because it is metallic. That means this is 100% metal. Specular has no impact on this, okay? So that's why I won't be talking about this. This is more for non-metals, okay? So then roughness, which is very important, this is basically how shiny the material is. If we have it really, really low, it's gonna be a mirror finish. Sure, it's fighting with the normal a bit. If it's really, really high, it's gonna be super, super rough. So what I like to do, if you wanna be really fancy, you could click your roughness map right here, and you could find a grunge map. So a grunge map is just like, a dirty map. It could just, you know, literally Google dirt map, grunge map, and they look something like this. So I'm gonna click that. And now it's telling me, or telling D5, which parts are dirty and which parts are not dirty. Obviously the higher it goes, the more rough and dirty it looks, which you don't want, but the lesser, you get this nice little balance of like shiny and dirty. So let me just turn off depth of field real quick. And look at that. You're beginning to see these kind of like fingerprints and dirt marks. And I'll do something like that. And always remember that under more settings, you could play with individual UVs. So if I wanna make this smaller or bigger, like the, uh, the mask here, and make this five, that will now be a larger scale. If I change this to 12, that's gonna match what I had before. And you can see that the highlights are changing here. 
So let me change my normal map a little bit so it's not as extreme, just so you could see a little bit more. So that's 12, that's two, that's six, that's 10. So you get the picture here. So you can kind of play with this to get it the right size. But now look at that. You've got like a really nice looking stainless steel that didn't take much time. If you want to be even crazier and you know, not really required, your metallic channel also supports a map. So what this does, this black and white, this is basically telling D5 what is metallic and what is not. And that's actually why there is a scale. Um, materials are either metallic or not, but the idea is if there's like rust or something, this is going to give you creative control to kind of blend what's rusty and what's not. So that's what's there. I don't recommend it unless this is like a super weathered item. You know, if this is like sitting outside for like a decade, yeah, totally do that. But leaving it one blank is totally fine. So at a minimum, you should have, again, a minimum, a normal map and a roughness map. Okay, that's really all you need. The normal is just giving us a little bit of that brushed look, right? And the roughness is doing all this heavy lifting to kind of make it look a little bit dirty because in the real world, nothing's 100% clean, right? So then I really like this material. Let's say I've dialed this in. I'm happy with it. I've got my round corner. Always got my round corner. Look at it without and look at it with. It's off. It's with. So we love that because it gives us this nice highlight right there. So now that we have that there, we can use this as our base material and apply it here. So this is usually like the iron surface, it's usually like more dull. So all I have to do is duplicate this, paste it here, and I'm just gonna play with materials. So I'm just gonna darken this, right? And it looks super, super shiny. So all I'm gonna do is crank my roughness, and there I go. So this looks super beat up, and you know, that could be fine depending on, you know, the surface, right? But if it's like a beautiful, luxurious kitchen, you probably don't want to do that. You could remove the roughness map or find with something that's got a little bit less contrast. Okay. So if I were to switch to this, you wouldn't see that as much because there wasn't that much contrast. What you're literally seeing here is, is contrast. I know I keep saying contrast, but like it's the best way I can explain <laughs> what's going on here. Um, so I like to find something that's got like you know, a nice like band. It's not like too, too large, like between white and black pixels. It's kind of like in the middle, like gray band. Um, and then you could go a long way just playing with the scale here. So it doesn't look so harsh. So that took like no time at all. And that's kind of like your stainless materials, your, your brushed metals that have got this directional, um, you know, kind of line work. So then the other type of metals that you'll probably deal with are like chromes, chromes we see all the time. And that's like a mirror finish. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this. And I'm just gonna go over to our little sink here and I'm just gonna apply it here. So this does not look like a chrome finish. So if you don't know what chrome is, I'm talking about something like this. I'm talking about something like this. So super, super shiny. This is like mirror, mirror finish, right? So this is like, this is matte black where it's not super shiny and I'll explain that in a little bit. And this is super, super shiny. So what I would do here is I would actually crank my, um, my roughness lower and lower. So it's super shiny. I'd remove my base color here. Okay. You see, we're getting, we're getting that nice sheen. Look at that. Like that looks beautiful. And just a little pro tip here. Um, if you didn't realize this, if you click right here, more settings, you can actually override the contrast of your map right in here, and you can play with the brightness and the darkness. So if you don't want to mess with the base color, like chip right here, you can actually just do that right here. So this is an easy way to just like brighten up a texture map without having to go into Photoshop. So this is super shiny and bright. This looks gorgeous. Um, and I'm fine with, you know, roughness being like zero. If I want, if it's not like a super hardcore Chrome, I could do something like this and it does break up the reflections a little bit. You see how it's not like crystal clear, but having that map, it's going to give me that nice variation between like 0 0.08, you know, 0.05 because it's, you know, it's a map. It's not just flat. I'll show you what flat, flat will look like. And it won't look like much because again, this map is really, really subtle. You're going to see little spots. And again, that's like, a lot of what ArcViz is, it's like these little subtle variations. Cause when you think of the real world, it's not like a whole surface is like 
dirty and it's just caked with an even amount of like dust or dirt no it's got like some fingerprints here it's clean here it's got some oil stains there you know it, it kind of varies so that's why these maps are really really important so i'm gonna have that sit there and that's super low so then if i'm playing the uh the finish game right and i want to do even more finishes like maybe like this lux gold and just looking at it you see how the reflection's not super super um shiny it's kind of like a matte i'd say it's like the sister product of matte black um so what i would do here is i'm just going to move my color over here i'm going to grab my d5 just shift it over here and i want to make sure that i can grab this color right here so watch this i'm going to grab this i'm going to grab this color right here and now i've got that tint there but my roughness is incorrect i'd have to increase this you see that you see how it's becoming more and more matte and we're seeing more and more of those reflections i could play with the scale and everything um i think there's a little bit more of a sheen so i could do something like like that right so that looks great and then if i wanted to do matte black it's the same process this is matte black i could grab this and i could do that and there we go so like this is what i mean by like having a really nice starter you know material like i'm using this and this is really doing a lot of the uh the lifting for me like i already took care of the parameters and the scales and everything um it's just up to me to kind of play around with this so i could play with my roughness some more and i can make it matte and you see how we have like so much texture here this scale i would say is like inappropriate for this so i could do you know something something larger um or i could go higher um, that way it's not as extreme or visible. So let's say like 40. Um, it's like really, really, really dense. Uh, and it helps break that up. So you can kind of see gradually what's going on here. So super, super shiny. And then we start getting roughened. And again, I'm not playing with metallic, right? We took care of metallic. It is a metal, so it's going to stay there. The normal 0.02, totally fine. It gives us those nice strokes in there. And then really up to you if you even want to have that um, texture map in there with the lines, right? But now I can literally just sit here and fine tune this. So now let's switch to whatever this is. This is polished nickel. Um, and I can make this a little bit shinier, you know? And there we go. Now we've got a polished nickel. This is actually a really like um, common material. We, we get spec that all the time. It actually looks really nice. Um, so... I say this because I use this all the time, right? So this is where I would go and hit add to local, and then I would save it to my asset library. So if you don't know where this goes in your asset library, you go here to assets, you go local, and it's right here. Now I can paste this on, let's say the windows here. And there we go. So if you're using something all the time, be smart, save the materials, you know? No need for you to do this. Um, that often so anyways just a recap of this video it's like you can make the material once reuse it elsewhere use the color picker use ChatGPT to create you know textures as needed or find them online you know i was using ChatGPT just because it's it's 2025 you know use ai it's um super powerful um and like this can be done really quickly and save it to your library anyways that's it. This is the third part of our, you know, secrets to uh, materials series. I've been enjoying it. If you have any ideas for future materials I should cover, let me know. If you have any questions, drop it in the comments. I'll get back to you. And as always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.